by William N. Robeson presents E.K. Homo, Behold the Man, a symphony of reality written and directed by Per Lorenz. Columbia Workshop is proud to present Per Lorenz directing his first documentary radio play, Ecce Homo, Behold the Man. This brilliant young critic and director whose motion pictures, The Plow That Broke the Plains and The River, have made film history, tonight brings his documentary technique to a new medium, the radio. Based on official reports and on hundreds of case histories collected by government field men, Mr. Lorenz has created a factual drama. A Columbia Workshop presents Eke Homo, Behold the Man. This is Industrial America, Boston. Boots and shoes, fish and wool, Lowell, Wincy, Lemas and Dyes, Silk and Paper, Sewing Machines and Motorcycles, Waterbury, Bridgeport, Airplanes and Ammunition, Brass Fittings and Cotton Shirts, Submarines and Watches, Harrison, Jersey City, Paint and Varnish, Vaseline and Patent Medicine. Electric wire and asphalt, leather goods and silk, Philadelphia, Hamden, radios and locomotives, street cars and carpets, chemicals and furnaces, hosiery and turbines, children's clothes and boilers, Pittsburgh, wheeling, tin plates and fire bricks, air brakes and plumbing fixtures, tube steel and freight cars, anthracite and mine machinery, aluminum and plate glass, drawing instruments and plastic, Buffalo, Syracuse, tin cans and roller bearings, wax candles and soda ash. Mint meat and typewriters, washing machines and light bulbs. Cleveland, Youngstown. Nuts and bolts and printing presses. Diesel engines and multigraph machines. Electric batteries and steel forging. Akron, Toledo. Airplane motors and rubber tires. Beer bottles and spark plugs. Steel hooks and microphones, spray guns and paper bags. This is industrial America. Detroit, Pontiac. Automobiles and trailers, trucks and buses, taxi cabs and coaches. Drop forging and steel pushing. Carburetors and paint, coal stokers and tear gas bombs, Chicago, Gary, bacon and beef and telephones, furniture and pipe organs, doors and sashes and bridge beams, marine motors and cotton gloves, transmission chains and saws, Indianapolis, South Bend, dressing machines and whistles, tractors and ball bearings, fruit jars and land lawnmowers, outboard motors and ornamental fences, Kansas City, St. Louis, grain elevators and pipelines, Pullman cars and beer, plows and drugs and breakfast food, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Silos and skis, macaroni, mac- mattresses, and cattle scales. This is industrial America, the power and glory of the richest country in the world, the factory of seven million men and women. Worker number seven seven eight five. Worker number seven seven eight six. Worker number seven seven eight seven. Worker number seven seven eight eight. Worker number seven seven eight nine. Worker number seven seven nine zero. Number seven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the straight line. In two minutes before your very eyes, you will see thirty thousand different pieces of material assembled into one machine. Two weeks ago, these parts were still in the mines of Pennsylvania and West Virginia the oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma, and the copper shafts of Montana, the iron mountains of Minnesota. They have come from the strip mills of Ohio, from the textile mills of the South, tested and checked, processed and perfected in plants as intricate as this. Along these two steel tracks, half a mile long, you will see steel, iron, brass, tin, lead, zinc, aluminum, chromium, and nickel. You will see rubber, mica, glass, cotton, mohair, 
all fit into place, magically assembled into one tested perfect piece of machinery, the American automobile. Two days ago, these parts were moving to a hundred factories. On a hundred straight lines, they received the skill of thousands of men and women in order that they might reach this assembly plant in a state of perfection. You will see a new car drive off the line every half a minute. Here, through the vigilance and skill of workers, inspectors, managers, and scientists, men and machines create a perfect instrument. Here is a saga of human ingenuity, planning and coordination, the glory of industrial America. Here is the straight line. Seven seven thirty five engine block and valve seat. Number seven seven thirty eight crank shaft and connecting rod. Number seven seven forty fenders and hoods. Number seven seven forty three rear spring. Number seven seven forty five rear axle and differential. Number seven seven forty eight shock absorbers and gas tanks. Number seven seven fifty front axle and springs. Number seven seven fifty four drive shaft and transmission. Number seven seven fifty seven engine block and installation. Number seven seven sixty crank shaft and valve seat. Number 7764. Piston and connecting rod. Number 7766. Gray paint and drying oven. Number 7780. Brake tubing. Number 7783. Wheels and tires. Number 7785. Steering gear and radiator. Number 7788. Doors and braces. Number 7790. Side and top welding. Study Department, Watson in sales speaking. We're 4,500 units off this week. Right. Production, Jenkins in time study. We're 4,500 units off. I'm sending the breakdown over. Hello, Casey. Production. We're cutting down the three days a week. Application for relief. Name, Jack Layton. Age, 43. Height, 6 feet 1. Weight, 185. Place of birth, Louisa, Kentucky. Father, dead. Mother, dead. Married a single, single. Served in U.S. Army, Navy, or Marine Corps. Sergeant, U.S. Army, Infantry, 386th Regiment, 77th Division. Present employment, none. Real estate, none. Ever insured, yes. Any insurance now, none. Property other than household goods, automobile. Any income from blind or old age pensions, lodges, labor unions, U.S. government, or any other source, none. Cash securities, stocks and bonds, mortgages, certificates, cash, $35. No other securities, etc. 
7790 first paper pass. 7790 first application for relief pass. 7790, 7790, 7790, 7790, 7790, 7790 is headed west. 7790 west on Highway 40. West of Gary, west of Chicago Heights in Aurora. 7790 is headed west. 7790 headed west. And a 36 sedan and 35 bucks in his pocket. Name, age, occupation. I remember when we went down to the courthouse. You'd see the pines stretching clear across to Virginia then. You could kick a pheasant out of a laurel bush. You could go hook a bass at the head of the riffles and work a corn patch all in one day. I remember when we went down to the courthouse. They had the old boys in the fight for mottlers. And I remember how Judge Adams got red in the face and waved his arms. Going to France to save the women and children. They kept picking up Ben Davis and putting him on the steps. Boy, was he drunk. I remember the kids didn't go to school. They stood on the freight cars and waved their little flags when the train pulled out. Yeah, it was hot in Shelly Cotton. 7790 riding with a million men on wheels. The cotton pickers riding on Route 90. Out of New Orleans for Houston, through to San Antonio. North to Oklahoma and Arizona and the new cotton field. When we came home, we used to sit on the courthouse steps and watch for the new cars going through town. They said it was the war, but they cut down the trees while we were away and put up electric light poles on the main street. They said times are different. The chemical plant killed a bass clear down past Black Ford and you'd walk ten miles to find a clear stream. They put up Frank 75 on the courthouse square. We used to sit all day Sunday talking and looking at the new cars. 7790 riding on the highway of the unemployed. The fruit tramps riding on the Delta Road. Over from Jacksonville across the continent, clear to California. Up Route 99 for lemons and oranges, prunes and peaches. Up past Fresno and Washington and Oregon for apples. The man said that he'd give us all $100 in a railroad fare. Said they needed strong boys in the north. They gave us $10 a day in after. We bought silk shirts and got drunk every night. We stayed out all night and slept at the machines in the form used to throw wrenches at us. That was crazy, then. You could spend all night at the amusement park and buy silk shirts. The body punch would get $20 if you worked out. We were 27, then. I remember that tough inspector in Detroit. He caught me sitting down and he chased me clear out of the plant and he had my check waiting at the cage as I went by. 7790 riding west on 40, west of the flat corn belts of Indiana and Illinois. The pickers riding west on Route 80, for lettuce, peas, onions, and spinach. Up 87 to Denver and Sheridan, along the side of the Rockies to Billings and Great Falls for sugar beet. I remember in 27 when the production department said we couldn't weld zinc. We got the gas tank well going in six weeks. They gave us a bonus then. I remember in 29 when we built up 15,000 units a day. And then they put us on short time, and the married men only got four days a week. And then they put that 20-ton press in plant number 10 and got kids to stamp out tops and fenders, pushing buttons and punching out body tops and fenders. 7790 heading west, west across the Mississippi. The Wheat Hand heading west on Route 10 out of Minneapolis. West across the northern tabletop to Fargo and Grand Forks, Valley City and Bismarck. Over the divide from Miles City to Missoula and Spokane. Name, age, and occupation. They'll sit around the union halls and the married men will get the first relief cards. They'll go to meetings and the old men will get the first short time. They'll talk politics and cuss and wait for the food cards. But there's country in the West I've never seen. They said the youngsters get all the jobs, but the youngsters never carry duck boards out of breast or the mud up to your knees. They said the bums go West, but they're building dams in the desert. They're cutting down mountains. 7790 riding with a million men on wheels. Coffee and hamburger, 10 cents. We fix flats. Chicken dinners and tourists. Second hand tires, free water. Idle rest. Hot dogs and pop. Today's special, pork and beans, 15 cents. Do drop in. Coffee free to truck drivers. The Hollywood cabins, 50 cents a night. Tourist bar, light and water. Welcome to the city, rotary luncheon, 12 on Tuesdays. Second hand tires, free water and air. We fix flats. Yeah, where'd it be? 
I'll fill her up. Yes, sir. You come from the east? Yeah. You going far? No, pretty far. Well, you'll have a lot to stop me. I was telling a fellow the other day, so many people on the highway, I said, wanted me that anybody at home at all. Well, that'd be a dollar ten with tax. Now, uh, what else can I do for you? Give me a box of crackers and coke and some cheese. Store cheese or rat cheese? Store cheese. Mama, bring out a box of those crackers and some store cheese. Hey, come over here and sit in shade, brother. We've got the best shade in Canada, I always say. Thanks, I'm doing well. Oh, oh. Looks like I've got another customer. There, hi there. You fill her up? No, sir. Three gallons would be about right. Yes, sir. I say, you got a small crowbar on here I can borrow? Well, Mama, where's that little crowbar I had last week? Look on the floor in the back of my sedan, you find one. I think. Well, that'll be 46 cents a tax. Oh, happens over the tire, huh? Yep. Vent rim running on a flat. Mind if I fix it, yeah? Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'll sit over here in the shade and watch it. Oh, 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 yes, sir, it's the best shade in Kansas. It feels good to me, it's a hot road. Yeah. Uh, you said you're from me, sir? Huh? Yeah. Well, how is it back there? Oh, it's sort of quiet. Mm. I never been eat, but I tell Mama the other day, man sit right here on this porch and just meet people from all over. Now, take the other day. I was sitting here, and I looked down the road, and, well, it was hot. Well, it just hot just the day, and I see a woman carrying a violin, and a man carrying a baby coming down the road. Well, see, that doggone baby wasn't more than about a year old. They come a-dragging in, young people they was, and asked them where they're from. And you know where? California. Well, see, as how they come so far, I asked them in a set a while. Well, see, this fella played in the band, but he went broke. How far are you going out there? East, he said. Uh, how far east, I said. Well, the girl finally says that she's got an aunt in Brooklyn. Claire, New York. They ain't seen her in ten years, but they figure she's around somewhere and put them up. Well, Mama, m- Mama gave them one of our 50 cent cabins and set them up. We got them a ride with a fella going in Chicago. But I told Mama, I says, I'd sure like to see that aunt's face when they walk in with that baby. I said the that... use of the crowbar, partner. Oh, that's all right. Oh, you got her got her fixed already? Yeah. I think I'll just cool off a minute. Yeah, sit down, sit down. I uh, like told this fella. The best shade in Kansas. Yeah, feels good to me. Mm. My goodness. L- look at that fella boy. Mama, bring that water can out. Got a fella on fire out here. Yeah, I thought it got hot in Alabama. But this Kansas... Now, it's really hot. Hey, brother, this is midwinter to what was in 36. Now, that's when it was hot. I, I was sitting right here on this porch when old man Jones, he- he's got two sections of land west over there, he-, he comes running in to call the Abilene Fire Department. His wheat field just naturally blew up and caught fire so hot. It's a gospel truth. Spontaneous uh, combustion or something, they said. Uh, just give it to the man, Mama. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Hey, you better cool her off before you put that in, or you'll have spontaneous combustion. Well, hi. Yes, sir, what, what'd it be? Well, I'd thank you for some drinking water if you got any around, and a can of tobacco. Well, just go right inside, brother, and Mom will take care of you. Yeah, thank uh, you. I'd like some of that water myself. Well, now, there's a bucket and a dipper on the porch. Just help yourself. Best water in Canada, I always say. Right. Come back here, don't I? Yeah. So there's no use to a man unless he's got a family. Tell the child alone wants to get somewhere. Hey, you heading east? I'm going west. I'm aiming for Iowa. Well, I'm heading east. So maybe I'll find some company. My old grandmother always said poor people ought to travel together. So I'm heading east. I'm from the east. And I'll tell you about it. My partner and me, we set the first machinery in the biggest textile mill on the Cape. There's no two better mill mechanics than Massachusetts, we used to say. And when they shut the mills down, 31, we watched them sitting there, with their broken windows, just like 
Blind, gray old men. And the fog's drifting in from the vineyard. And we sat there and watched them. And then we took summer people for boat rides. And fished for bait. And waited. We helped them tear out the machinery. And we watched them take down the bricks. Mills is moving south, I said. But we're New England men. So we bought a trailer. We went over to the lake. They'll need new men in the new factories, we said. It was cold, Michigan. My partner had a dog. But we give him to a fellow and got a cat. A cat could find his own food. Well, they didn't need mechanics, I said. And we sold the trailer. My partner took his share and went home. Going on relief, he figured. But I'm heading south where the mills is. If it's cotton mills, they'll need machinists, I told him. Yep, there's work in the south. Brother, there's work in the south. There's work for eight million people. Planting cotton, chopping cotton, picking cotton, falling the sun in the hot fields. There's work in the new cotton mills. Work enough at eight dollars a week. The length of choking you and the kids and the store man leaving you behind every Saturday. My granddaddy came over from Carolina before my daddy was born. Cleared himself a place in the pine. His people raised cotton for them. In 17, we had 150 acres in the clear. And cotton went from 50 cents to 6 cents in a week. The bank busted. We held on, but we had to go shares in 30. We never been ahead since. Sometimes it seemed like the very fields are tired. Now they're talking about chopping cotton with machines. They, they say they're going to sell them used and plant it and pick it and chop it and run it right over the mills on machines. Well, when my women folks went to the mills, I said, I'm going north. What? I read where a fella died up there and left $9 billion. I said, I'm going north where the mills pay you enough for radios and movies. I said, I'm going up where the money is. They said they're jumping off bridges and acting. They said they're mumbling the bread lines, but the machine and the men are there. I remember when they told the Swede you've got to cut up 40 ships. They said it'd take two years to scrap 40 ships. And I remember how the Swede rigged up the disc saw and we cut them down two in a week. Well, the machines are still there. I'm heading west where they're moving mountains. They took me west when I was six years old. My father moved me from Missouri. They said my lungs was bad. That the river was bad for my lungs. You could see the tan grass waving for 50 miles out there then. Nights I used to cry when the rock island whistled across the plains and the coyotes answered. I used to cry and once I tried to run away. Then they gave me a pony and a heifer of my own. And I never wanted to go back to Missouri. When I was 21, my father gave me a section of land. My brother and I ran three sections in 17. Then we went to war. And they plowed up the ranch. Told my father it was patriotic, so they plowed it all while we were away. They brought the tractors and the combines. Fellows used to come clear from Chicago. Plant a crop, go away. Suitcase farmers, we call them. They used to plow a thousand acres a week before the dust came. We stuck it six years. We sat six years and watched the dust. We watched the dust drift over the windows. Took all fall to push the dust off the field so you could raise another crop of dust the next spring. So we hit the highway in 36. I'll tell you about the West. There's wood cutting grapes for a son of tray. Money for gas enough to get you to the next camp. There's wood picking cotton at ten cents an hour. Living in a migratory camp. Eating beans and meat the butcher throws away. And there's a night in camp. With the children crying and the women staring at you. For a man can't stand it. I said I'd drown mine before I'd raise kids that way. So I'm headed for Iowa. My wife's following the crops with my brother, but I'm leaving the kids with Ken and Iowa so they'll know what our home's like. 
Maybe I'll go back. They had to let the dynamiters down the side of the canyon on ropes at Boulder Dam. They blew up a mountain and made a lake in a desert and built the highest dam in the world. But you can't eat dams. They're changing the course of the second biggest river in the country, Grand Coulee. Yeah, but they can't figure out how to feed 11 millions of us. They hit quicksand up there. So they stuck brine pipes in and froze her and then dug it out. But the big boys have the machines. There's nothing but relief for the little men. There's men and machines in this room. There'll be water enough for thousands of farms up there. Yeah, but the big boys have the money. There's room enough for 30 million people. Why, man, they're building the biggest piece of machinery in the world. But what'll you do when they're finished? They can build plenty more. They can make the desert green. Maybe they'll build a green city. Maybe they'll start east and build her all over again. Maybe there'll be farms for the little men. They can move mountains, and they can shove rivers around. There's men and machines. And there's sun and land and room for a man to turn around in. And there's a man-sized job to be done. I've just heard the Columbia Workshop's presentation of Ecce Homo, an industrial symphony written and directed by Per Lorentz, whose motion pictures, The Plow That Broke the Plains and The River, have stimulated millions of American citizens to a deeper understanding of their nation's problems. Bernard Herman conducted the orchestra, and William N. Robeson, director of the workshop, supervised the production. public to Mr. Lorenz's treatment of the vital contemporary problem of men and the machines. Would you please give us your honest comment, your suggestions, your criticism? Merely address the Columbia Workshop, chair of the Columbia Network, New York City. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.